Hi, welcome to The City Show. I'm your host, Dr. Tom Krieger. On this week's show, we'll spend a great deal of time talking about parks, including the 10-year master plan that's being developed for Lebanon and how you can have an impact on those decisions. We'll also preview the Lebanon Oktoberfest and talk more about the Halloween Pooch Parade. Up first, a levy from, for Lebanon schools is on the ballot in November. It's very important, and with us are a couple of really important people uh, and, and great folks, Mary, Mary uh, Amy Brewer and uh, Superintendent Todd Yohi. Uh, welcome to the City Show. Thank you. Thank you. It's a privilege to have you guys here. I'm, I'm kind of nervous. Uh, hey, thanks all, for having all us. All the power that you guys bring and the, what you do and, and, and how much you guys give. I'm just, I want to say thank you, you know, because uh, You're welcome. It, it, it's such a, a big, important thing for our wonderful city. But right now we're, we're talking about uh, th this levy. Uh, and, and you've put your name on this thing. You stepped up because this is really important. Uh, and you carry some clout. You, you're not going to say it, but you do. Why is this so special to you? Well, I, and I tell this story to uh, those that will, will listen. Um, I think back about 27 years ago um, when I first began teaching, um, we had a levy on the ballot in May. Yeah. And we lost that levy. And I was one of a number of um, teachers and staff members that lost, lost my job. Oh, my. And how it really negatively impacted the district in terms of dismantling it, yeah. and I'll never forget that. And as busy as I, I am, I felt it was just way too important to not step up to the plate and do what I needed to do yeah. to help get this levy passed. I've always believed that a great city equals a great school, and a great yeah. school equals a great city. So that is why it is so important to me to be a part of, of the action and the moving forward that our, our school district and our city yeah. truly deserves. Yeah, they do go hand in hand, even yes, property, they do. property values. The first thing people want to know is, how are the schools? Yes. Because uh, if the schools aren't good, people don't want don't to live here. Well, when I, you know, when I moved here, that's one of the first things with children. The first thing I asked was, yeah. how, are, how are our schools? Yeah. And when, when I heard great schools, I said, this is the community for yeah. us. And our schools are pretty great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Todd, what message was sent to the school system in the, uh, in the defeat uh, back in the spring? <clears throat> well, I think the message was that um, we didn't maybe get a good, do a good enough job of getting uh, the message out there about the need and yeah. the urgency. Uh, we, you know, we certainly do not go to our taxpayers when we don't need additional revenue. Uh, that need uh, is now. Okay. And, um, you know, I think we rolled up our sleeves and, and went back to work. Uh, got, a, got a great levy chair yeah. uh, to, to help us carry that message. Uh, Amy's a great public servant, but we're all public uh, servants in a, in a public mm -hmm. school district. Yeah. We all work for the taxpayers. Uh, the taxpayers uh, fund public schools, and I think it's important for people to know and understand that, you know, the Lebanon City School District belongs to the Lebanon community and those that own property. And uh, because of that, you know, they get an opportunity to decide, um, you know, whether we have the funds to, to operate the programs and provide instruction uh, that we do or not. Yeah. Well, I, I obviously, we must need more money. What, what do we need more money for? Well, the uh, levy that's proposed in November is an operating levy that uh, provides for the operations of the school district. Yeah. So if you think of everything that happens in a school district, instruction, <clears throat> transportation, uh, different types of programming, uh, safety, that's yeah. a big one now, the, the safety and security of our students and, and our staff. Uh, really every operation except for food service. Food okay. service is, is self-funded on its own. Uh, but every, every, every other thing you can think of that goes into operating a school district, uh, all the people involved and so forth, is, uh, is part of operations, and this wow. is an operating levy. I, 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 I thought the government helped uh, fund all that stuff. Uh, do we get any funding from the government for we, the We do. Uh, you're correct in your uh, assumption. Uh, for Lebanon, we're yeah. about 50% funded by the state okay. and 50% funded by local property taxes. Okay. Uh, I, I think one of the questions, too, is, and, and you answered partially, how's the money going to be spent? And how do they how do they monitor that as far as making sure that you know it, it's spent appropriately? Is there some way of tracking that, or how do the, you do that? There is uh, public school districts in Ohio are audited every 
year. Okay. So every fiscal year we are audited. Uh, the state takes a look at that and of course if there are any findings, yeah. uh, they issue those findings. Uh, I'm happy to say that for many, many years Lebanon has been citation free yeah. uh, in their audits. Those audits, by the way, are all available uh, online at our school website. Uh, you can take a look at those audits. Uh, we also have to prepare annually a five-year forecast which uh, not only details uh, the, the budget from the last yeah. couple of years, but also the current fiscal year and then the next four years. So you can go on and, and uh, anybody can go, can that uh, five-year forecast is available. We have to file it with the state. Yeah. Uh, so you can find it there. You can find it on our, uh, on our website. And that details all of the expenses and all of the revenues for okay. the school district. And the next question I have is kind of in two parts. Uh, what happened when the last levy Mm -hmm. didn't pass, what were the, the consequences, and what's going to happen if it doesn't pass again? Well, the, uh, as I said uh, during the opening, we really don't go to our community unless there's a need. Yeah. And so, you know, that need was real, and it remains real because of the failure in May. Uh, and so when that happens, you, you start to, to cut your budget. So because revenue for school districts in Ohio are relatively flat, yeah. both the state money and local property uh, taxes are relatively flat and have been for us since 2011, which was the last time uh, our community approved an operating levy. Um, uh, because of that, expenses tend to increase, but your revenue stays flat, and there's only one, a couple of solutions to that. Yeah. One is that you bring in more revenue, which is what the levy is about, or you cut expenses. Yeah. And so we immediately started to cut expenses. Uh, we uh, did not replace five teaching positions which uh, were open through retirement and we had a couple of teachers okay. that, that uh, left the district. Uh, we laid off uh, 10 aides uh, and we cut um, purchases in instruction, ma instructional yeah. materials, technology, uh, and so on. What's at risk now uh, with, a, uh, with a failure in November are a lot deeper cuts. Yeah. So we're looking at the possibility of probably about 15 teachers, 10 to 15 teachers. Uh, school transportation for high school uh, will be cut. Uh, transportation for students K-8 that live outside of two miles of their school, okay. uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, within two miles uh, of their school uh, are likely to be uh, cut as well, as well as deeper cuts into instructional programs yeah. and so on. And uh, really additional cuts in aides, uh, secretarial administration, um, certainly bus drivers since yeah. we're, we're, we'll, we'll be reducing transportation. Uh, but uh, people need to understand, I think, that their school district, 80% of our budget is people. Uh, it takes a lot of people to, to care for 5,600 students every day. Oh my. Uh, you know, to love them, to yeah. teach them, uh, to protect them, yeah. uh, to provide for their needs. Uh, that takes a lot of people. Yeah. And so 80% of our budget is people. Yeah. And when you have to make cuts, the only place you really save any type of money is in people. Yeah. And so uh, when people go away, programming goes away, uh, all of the needs that kids have aren't being met like they were before. Uh, we're not looking to add anything with this additional yeah. revenue. We're not adding teachers. We're not adding programming. It's really just to allow us to continue operating as we are right now. Uh, it, it seems like our district is growing. We have more people coming out here. That, does that give us more of a tax base? Does the tax base, ben, is a portion of that go to the schools as well? Um, that's a misconception. Without the levy? That, that, that's a, a common misconception. It's yeah. one that we, yeah. that's probably the most common misconception that we have. Okay. Uh, and there's actually two of them in your question. Okay. Uh, the first misconception is that we're a growing school district. Yeah. Uh, that actually is not true. Uh, we have a relatively flat enrollment for the last 10 years, uh, and those enrollment numbers are available if you look at our frequently asked questions, yeah. uh, we have that posted there. Uh, but for the past 10, 11 years, we have, we've had a relatively flat enrollment, uh, so we're not a growing school district, but we have seen a lot of, uh, of growth in terms of housing developments and, and, and new housing and so on. 
Uh, but when that happens, uh, school districts do not benefit from any of those tax dollars because uh, there's a, a um, tax bill, House Bill 920, which was passed in 1976, which prohibits school districts and libraries from garnering any additional revenue from a levy um, more than what was originally passed by the community. Okay. So for example, this new levy, it's a 4.99 mil tax levy to raise $5 million for the next four years, uh, each year for the next four years. And that will never bring the district any more than $5 million. Okay. We could build 10,000 more homes and that levy will never bring in any more than $5 million. Uh, that's just the, the way schools are funded in Ohio. It's a tax structure. Many people believe that districts, school districts get more money. Yeah. They also believe that school districts get more money when property values increase. That also is not true uh, because of that same yeah. legislation, House Bill 19. Well, I, I would have thought, because don't they typically, the house owners get taxed a certain amount based upon each 100000 of the value of their home, so that the amount that a taxpayer has to pay it's not based on the value of their home? It is based on the value of their home. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, the way that that is determined is the county auditor, of course, yeah. you know, uh, does a reassessment every six years and a triennial update every three years. And so every time that is done, there's a new median home value established. Okay. And that is what determines your property taxes. Okay. If your property taxes are the same as the new median yeah. home value, your taxes don't change. Okay. If your new value is higher than that new median, then your taxes increase. Okay. And if your home value is less than that new median, then your taxes decrease. Okay. And so every time there's a new reassessment and there's a change in property tax value, people's property taxes either go up, stay the same, or decrease. Yeah. And because of that, in the end, the amount that's brought in by a levy is is the same. Okay. So uh, 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 to simplify that even further, yeah. um, if there are a thousand, or I'm sorry, if there are a hundred homes, and they're all paying a thousand dollars in property tax, that's a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. If the next year there are a hundred new homes, people think, well, the, great, that's another hundred thousand yeah. dollars. But in reality, it isn't. Now all 200 of those homes are only paying $50,000. Because you have a capped amount. Yes, yeah. because okay. we have a capped amount. Now we had a couple of schools uh, recently uh, torn down, Louisa Wright mm -hmm. and, and the old junior high school. And I'm, I'm assuming we did some building. We did. Uh, w where does the funds for that building come from? Yeah, that's all separate funding okay. from operations. Uh, those are bond uh, levies. So there yeah. were bonds issued okay. for that construction. Uh, that was a partnership with the state of Ohio. <clears throat> And all of that construction that has happened in the district over the last 15 to 18 years uh, is part of a facilities master plan that was passed by our community, by referendum, by yeah. a vote of our community, twice actually. Once in 2001, which started the construction project with uh, a new high school and Bowman over the years yeah. and so on. And then our community reaffirmed that again in 2013 when we entered this partnership with the state yeah. uh, and the state's paying a little over 40 percent of all of that construction and the district pays 60 percent uh, there has been nothing outside of that master plan that has been done by the district nice. so all of the construction has been guided by that facility yeah. master plan that has now been passed twice by our voters. Okay. Uh, and, and so we're only doing exactly what our voters told us to do with construction. Yeah. And I know people see a building being torn down and uh, they may not agree with that or may not may uh, be upset about that, but yeah. our community said, this is the plan that we want. Uh, which included the new construction and renovation and then the tearing down. Now, now we, we have we have new turf and, and the track mm -hmm. at the stadium too. Yes. Kind of similar thing as far as... Uh, well, the, the turf and the track, uh, the, the partnership with the state does not pay anything for athletic facilities. Okay. okay. Uh, and uh, our community installed turf uh, 10 or 11 years ago, uh, the district did, and uh, turf has a 10-year warranty. 
Yeah. And so it was in at the end of its lifespan. Uh, our high school track uh, was not in very good shape. Yeah. In fact, we didn't hold any home track meets last year. Oh my. Uh, we found a couple of spots on the track yeah. that could not be repaired. And so we made the decision not to yeah. hold any home track meets there because of safety. Wow. Uh, was very fortunate to um, to work with Premier Health. Uh, they donated uh, $500,000 for, uh, we renegotiated the naming rights contract that uh, exists at the, uh, at the stadium. And so Premier Health uh, donated 500,000 uh, of that cost. It was about yeah. a $650,000 project to do both the turf and the track. 500,000 of it came from uh, Atrium Premier. The other 150000 came from our permanent improvement fund, nice. not operations. Yeah. And because the district knew that turf eventually has to be replaced, uh, we had been setting aside funding each year, yeah. knowing that we were going to have this turf expense. Yeah. You're managing so that, that really well. So that that's, funding yeah, was that's, there that's to brilliant. help offset the... the so if costs. the levy pass or the prior cuts, are they going to go away? Uh, the prior cuts will, uh, we'll have to take a look at those. Yeah. Uh, the teaching positions uh, more than likely will come back. Uh, the aid positions are always based on need. So we'll need to take, we'll have to take a look at the need uh, to determine how many aid positions uh, return. But certainly we'll be able to resume, resume some instructional uh, costs that we cut and, and so on. But it won't be anything additional yeah. that, you know, we didn't have before. Now, now does the uh, school district agree to a tax abatement with the city? Uh, the school district did just work with the city of Lebanon uh, yeah. to uh, work on some uh, tax abatement. It, it's actually a, a Community Reinvestment Act project, CRA, yeah. uh, for the North Broadway development uh, down by Barry School. Okay. And uh, the city initially asked the school district to agree to a 15-year, 100% tax abatement, okay. uh, which they're required to do for anything above 50% or longer than 10 years. And so we sat down and through several negotiation uh, sessions, uh, we came to an agreement with the city to protect the school district and our taxpayers yeah from any educational costs that would come from any students that might move into uh, that development. Wow. Uh, the developer uh, has constructed very similar developments in other communities and while there have been some families with children move into those developments, yeah. they're really not designed for families, they're designed for empty nesters and new couples. Yeah. But of course you know, if a family can afford the price point and moves in, there's there's nothing to stop them from doing that. But we did not want to assume the risk of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, of a new of new students being in those developments and not having the educational costs. Uh, and so the city is going to pay us ten thousand dollars per student, student. at yeah. those addresses to cover the educational costs up to what the developer would have had to pay. You, you know, we're, we're getting close to the end of uh, uh, October, okay? Mm -hmm. If this was like right on the end of October, you should have came in a Superman costume <laughs> and Wonder Woman, because what you guys are doing, man, it's, it's you're, you're protecting. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I, I don't think people really get uh, just the passion behind what you're doing. Uh, well, and I, and I think what's, what you've learned through a lot of what uh, Todd has said, kind of we what we want to do is we want to educate our voters with the yeah. facts with, with that said what exactly is an emergency levy because i mean there's emergency levy okay so how would you describe this as an emergency levy because there's something critical here so, well I, and, and emergency yeah. is a is a is a big term uh it's a term that tends to get people's yeah, attention got my attention but for yeah. the for the I don't think for the right reason, because uh, in Ohio tax law, emergency is a term that, that, that is used to define a levy that, uh, that is limited. Yeah. It's a limited term levy. Yeah. So uh, you can run a levy that's continual. Yeah. So it just always continues, it, it doesn't expire. But you also can run a limited term levy anywhere from one to 10 years. Yeah. 
And when you do that, it's called an emergency levy. It doesn't necessarily equate to a crisis yeah. or, uh, you know, you're next to the state coming in to yeah. take over and so forth. Although I do know that that's what it conveys. Yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't really mean crisis as, yeah. as you sort of thought that it did. It really just means that it's limited term. And in this case, it's limited to four years. So you, you mentioned transportation might be cut. What, what else are we going to lose? How else is this going to negatively affect us uh, with the schools? Uh, well, certainly we're not going to be able to provide the instruction, all of the instructional programming that we yeah. provide now. Uh, class sizes will be larger because we'll have less okay. teachers. Um, parents and caregivers are going to have to figure out how to get. You, you know, you mentioned something earlier too, as far as security. I mean, there, there's there's a big concern well, I think know, in our nation about that. Right. Are the we dynamics. Gonna, the yeah. dynamics of school, a school system uh, back when I first started teaching and it is now. Um, security and safety is a top yeah. priority for every school district and of course for our school district. So those dynamics have changed. So when you have teachers who are doing in-service for um, school security yeah. uh, versus something else, um, th that's important. So, And that being something new might be something that would be cut probably quicker? Uh, I would say school safety and security uh, is is something that we it's cannot cut corners right. on. That's that's good. Uh, you know, we would we would maintain you know the safety and security that we have now, and always look for ways uh, to keep right. students yeah. uh, safe. I don't think that's something that you can necessarily pay. You know, yeah. put on right. a chopping block and. Yeah and so forth, and I don't want people to think we would use something like yeah. that to, to garner a yes vote. Yeah. You know, I, I'll tell you, it's hard to put your pillow on the night, yeah. every night with the lives of 5,600 students wow. on your shoulders, uh, and you know, I, wouldn't, I, don't, I would never do anything yeah. to, right. to jeopardize that. And I'm very proud of what we've done yeah. in Lebanon uh, to protect our students and our staff. Uh, and, and some of those measures have created uh, some inconveniences yeah. for people, uh, but that's you know that's the world that we live in now, yeah. and and protecting staff and protecting students uh, and people who are in our buildings uh, day in and day out uh, is just a, yeah. a high priority uh, for us, and it needs to be. So how how and where do I vote? People out there want to know. Well, this is important. Uh, w when do, it's in November. Uh, November fifth is okay. the, the election. Of course, there's okay. early voting. Um, so if you don't like the crowds and all that busyness, you can go out there and avoid that. You don't have to stand in line. Correct. What about, what about absence, absentee voting? Is that available Those too? Those are all options. Those are all options to vote. Again, we want our voters to be informed yeah. with correct information. Um, you know, I talk a lot about social media, yeah. which is, can be a good thing and sometimes not so good because a lot of misinformation gets out there. No matter what the voter does, whether they yeah. vote yes or no, go having the facts, yeah. make an Thank informed you. decision yeah. uh, uh, about the district. Uh, you know, you, we, as we go out and we talk to people, we just want to give them good yeah. information. Our theme for our for our levy campaign and for our school district as a whole is Onward Lebanon. Yeah. We want, and we you see many people with Onward Lebanon um, shirts on. Yeah. We want our school district to move forward yeah. in a positive way wow. and find those important ways to, to, well, to this, accomplish this that. This is definitely important. Todd, thank you so much for being here. Amy, uh, the fact that you're on board too. Uh, thanks. That, that's got to be comforting you. for you. Yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate uh, it. We'll be back with Scott Brunka and Casey Burdick to talk about the Parks Master Plan right after this break.
Break your fast food habit at Kelly's Meats and Deli at 1001 West Main Street in Lebanon. Stop in for a quick lunch featuring made-to-order sandwiches, tasty sides, and mouth-watering daily specials. For dinner, Kelly's offers fresh-cut steaks, chops, and seafood, plus a variety of prepared dishes that only need to be reheated. You'll also find a large selection of high-quality wine and beer that can make any meal a special event. Kelly's Meats and Deli, open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday. Now open for dinner Saturday, 6 to 9 p.m. And remember, we cater to... Your hometown source, the Lebanon Channel, is now on YouTube. I know how fortunate I am. Just search City of Lebanon, Ohio to connect with everything that's happening right here. And, and that's going to be an exciting part about this walking tour. Subscribe to receive exclusive local content available only on the Lebanon Channel. Wow, Neil Armstrong's coming to my launch. I was so excited about that. That's the City of Lebanon, Ohio, now on YouTube. That's what makes us so. Uh, Lebanon, Ohio, a great yeah, place buddy. to live. Yeah. An auto accident is a terrible thing to encounter. Oftentimes, people look to getting their car taken care of, but they forget to take care of their body. At Lebanon Chiropractic and Fitness, that's what we do. We take care of your body with chiropractic adjustments, therapeutic massage, and therapeutic exercise. So if you've been involved in a vehicular collision, call our office at 933-9799 so we can take care of the body that counts. Call now to schedule your free initial consultation, 933-9799. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. <laughs> hey, public parks are a vital uh, element in the quality of life in any community. Uh, here in Lebanon, a committee has been working to develop a master plan to help guide future decisions regarding parks and the amenities offered within those parks. City Manager Scott Brunka and Casey Burdick, our Recreational National uh, Natural Resource Coordinator, are here today to tell us about those plans and your opportunity uh, to provide your input. Welcome to the City Show, guys. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Uh, how long has the city been working on the park's master plan? Uh, we officially kicked off trying to redo our park's master plan yeah. back in June. So it's been a few months in the ha in the making, okay. but we're, we're making pretty good headway so far. Seems like you've done a lot. Of, by the train station, you have that little park. Is that part of the master plan or is that Obviously, that, that's that's old news now. Yeah, that was actually a grant that we received yeah. last year okay. uh, through the state that kind of allowed us to convert that property into a park okay. and do a lot of kind of stream channel restoration. Great, so great that was job. kind of outside. Great of the job plan. on that, though. Right. I mean, that, that is right. that is uh, beautiful. Uh, who are the stakeholders in this whole process? So we pulled from a lot of different groups within yeah. the city to try to get a good cross section of representation throughout the city. So we have members from some of our, obviously our park board, they're the ones kind of um, the folks that help make the decision okay. on how the city does spend money and do things in our parks. But we also called in groups like the Harmony Civic Trust, the YMCA, a couple of moms groups, okay. um, you know, different members of other boards within the city. And we've had really good response. This, let's see, the school School board has representation, okay. the local sports leagues. So we just really tried to get a lot of folks that we know um, are invested in use our parks. It's brilliant that you brought the moms in. Yes. You know, <laughs> because uh, they're the, one, the ones bringing the kids out to the parks and mm -hmm. have some good input. Uh, what, what's the goal of the whole planning process here? So our goal is that we had a mar park, parks master plan. Yeah. Um, it was about 10 years old. So it was originally done in 2008. In 2018, we decided that we'd actually checked off a lot of the things on the list of to do. Okay. So the goal is that we can get the feedback from the community now, and then through the park board, um, they we can work together and try to come up with what the city really needs based yeah. on the community's wants. Okay. What 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 features have been identified that uh, uh. the parks? Are lacking. I, I can't imagine <laughs> anything. We have we uh, got plenty of feedback on that. So. Yeah, so Place to fly your drone. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, as we get more and yeah. more advanced. Yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, we'll, we'll actually be presenting some of that information yeah. as the surveys start to come back because we also did an online survey okay. to the community. So once that information is compiled, we will be putting out that information. Okay. We seem to get quite a bit of feedback about <coughs> splash pads. So that seems to be an area yeah. where a lot of folks are interested in. Um, you know, looking at Lebanon for that. Um, splash pad, like a, like a water park? Yeah, a little water yeah. feature for kids to play. Oh, in. nice, um, yeah. But then a lot of trails. I mean, I think a lot of people love hiking, biking, yeah. trails. So we're getting a lot of feedback on and that now as well. Now, is, is a dog park, is that part of your area as well? Uh, yeah, and that yeah. was actually when you look at another Casey, br just brilliant. Yeah, idea. Ca well, yeah. Casey mentioned the 2008 Parks Master Plan. So that project was actually identified okay. in the last master plan. Uh, that the city performed uh, over 10 years ago. And really what, what we use these planning documents for quite a bit is to go get grants. Yeah. So we were able to get some private funding and wow. some grants to support yeah. it. So uh, this planning process is important because it allows us then to kind of go apply for these state grants yeah. uh, for the projects that are identified in them. Brilliant, free money. Yeah, we'll yeah, take it. But you got to work. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So who's the, who's the, do you hire a grant writer? Is that no, in, in your case, wheelhouse? Casey, that's Casey's yeah. wheelhouse too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What don't you do? <laughs> you're, you're incredible. Uh, now, is this, a, is this a city project or is this a countywide uh, thing? Are, you, are we dealing with uh, parks countywide or is this strictly the city as far as the master plan? This is strictly dealing with the city's okay. parks. So okay. Warren County does have their own park system as well. So we're just focusing on what we have direct impact on. Yeah, are, are you happy with the public's uh, involvement as far as online? And are there other things mm -hmm. to do to get the public engaged on this? You mentioned the- Yeah, we were kind of blown away. I think we had over 500 responses wow. to the survey that we went out, which is a great response. And then uh, we do have a public open house uh, meeting scheduled for October 16th, yeah. which is really an opportunity for the public to come in and kind of see what our okay. preliminary findings are. So we're, yeah, the more public engagement we can get yeah. in this process, the better the plan's gonna end up being. Is that all in her lap too? It is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> My yes. gosh. She's all things parks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is where I position you to ask for a raise. Because <laughs> uh, she's like, she's oh. like three in one. So I know, yeah, I know. She's, she's golden. <laughs> uh, so, so when and where do we get a look at this master plan? When are you yeah. opening this up? Uh, Right, so if folks are interested in coming out, we do have a public meeting on October 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. Okay. It's gonna be held at the Warren County Administration Building. So the right there on Justice Drive next to the Big Pond. Sure. Um, it's right there on the first floor. So it's an open house style meeting. Yeah. So if you're running late getting there from work, yeah. don't worry, you can still come to the meeting and come and get information and share information that you would like to have, let the city know as well. And how, how can we let you know what we think of the plan? Is that the place where people come and let you know? Yeah, that would be well? great. If yeah. folks can come to that open yeah. house, that would be ideal. Um, if you can't make it to that, um, I, I'm not sure that the survey is still open, but we've already had a lot of people okay. fill out that online survey. Okay. So. And, and is it mostly moms that come to, to that? Is that? <laughs> it, I mean, I think it's is a, it's it, a cross a big, section. Is yeah. it a big crowd? I mean, I mean, how many people do you anticipate coming to that meeting? <laughs> You never know. Yeah. Like I said, we were pleasantly surprised with the feedback we got on the yeah. survey, um, but it really is a cross section. You have a lot of folks that are involved in youth sports that yeah. use our parks and okay. they've been very engaged. Um, obviously kind of the moms groups, um, but it's been all across the board. So it's yeah. been good to kind of get that cross section. So we're not, we don't want to become overly focused in just one specific area. And, and what other ways are there to become involved uh, in our parks? Oh, people are always welcome to come to our park board meetings. Okay. So they meet the second Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. in the city building. We are not having a meeting in October though, okay. so I will say that, um, but we will be meeting starting in October, or I'm sorry, November. Yeah. And those are, the meeting times are listed on our um, website. <laughs> okay. We're always looking for volunteers yeah. too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, 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 so. I would imagine this is mm -hmm. probably one of the projects, Scott, that you probably have more fun with. Oh yeah, because because yes. there's that creative side of you, right? Uh, and, and do you right. and Casey uh, banter ideas on this together? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, parks is something that is very important when you when you think about the quality of life in our yeah. community. It's important not only for our residents but our businesses. Yeah. More and more, our businesses and and businesses that are looking to locate into Lebanon. 
they want to make sure that those amenities exist for, for their employees. So it is, uh, it's really rewarding when you take an idea, you go out and get a grant, able to see the yeah. project uh, come to construction and um, you know, see the, the residents and the public enjoy it. Wow. And, and, and are you living your dream as far as this part of your job? Because you, you wear a lot of hats. Yeah. Uh, but, but working with the parks and Yeah, and this is a lot of fun. Yeah. Like you mentioned earlier, the Cedar City Park, is, that's what's called the little park next to the railroad tracks. Yeah. Um, watching that develop over time, it's been a slow process, yeah. but <laughs> seeing that actually develop and then we'll be planting next spring okay. with the Garden Club's help, that's going to be really neat to be able to, you know, add that value and beauty to the community. So, so do you guys ever just grab a bag lunch somewhere and just walk over there and just sit back <laughs> and, and, and recognize, man, we made this possible, we're involved in this? Because I know, I know yeah. you're busy, you probably don't, have, but you should. Yeah, you should. You should take the time to smell right. the roses, right. Right, you're so absolutely to say. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're always moving on to the next one, right? Yeah. Hey, is there anything else that we need to know or anything else that's coming up relative to the parks? Um, we're going to touch on it in a minute, but Oktoberfest is coming up on October 12th, and that's actually a main fundraiser for okay. uh, Miller Park, okay. which is up on the north end of town. And we are going to get into that. So, right. yeah, that's, so we'll touch on that a little more. Uh, than, again, yeah. one, one of the wonderful things that, yeah. that you do, and we'll be talking about that. Uh, well, we'll be back uh, with the folks from Sit Means Sit to preview Oktoberfest and the Halloween Pooch Parade right after this break. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Bob Holty Chevrolet always gives you the best. Best price, guaranteed. Best trade-in value. Best selection. Best financing on all new and pre-owned vehicles. See for yourself at BobPulte.com. And you'll love the Pulte price. Since 1954, Hardy's Interiors has been providing quality furnishings for homes in and around Lebanon, Ohio. Today, you'll still find quality antique and vintage furniture along with new Made in America furniture of all styles. At Hardy's, you can create a mix of furniture and accessories that truly reflects your personality. All made to last a lifetime. Designers are welcome and so are you. Hardy's Interiors at 208 and a half Wright Avenue or online at hardysinteriors.com. <laughs> Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Bob Holty Chevrolet always gives you the best. Best price, guaranteed. Best trade-in value. Best selection. Best financing on all new and pre-owned vehicles. See for yourself at BobPulte.com. And you'll love the Pulte price. Miller Ecological Park has brought a different way for us to enjoy the outdoors, whether it's a trail through the prairie, an active day on the nature playscape, or simply watching the birds. Uh, Miller Eco Park offers the opportunity to escape from your normal life. The Lebanon Oktoberfest was created to help raise money to support new projects in the park. And Casey Burdick is back uh, today to tell us what to expect from this festival uh, in 2019. Joining her is Reed Newlander New uh, from Sit Means Sit, who will be running the Pooch Parade, which kicks off the Oktoberfest each year. Welcome to the show, guys. And, and we have Indy yes. here with us. and. Uh, Tell us a little bit about, about Indy, because uh, he, he's, he's beautiful. Thank you. Indy is an Australian Shepherd Lab mix, yeah. and we got him from a shelter in Indiana, actually, when he was about 10 months old. Wow. Um, and and he's, he's one of the two dogs that, that I work with the most. Uh, they're our personal dogs. Uh, goes with me a lot wherever I go to, uh, to be able to sort of show off what, what he's yeah. able to do. Well, he's, he's still in a show. He yeah. is. Look at that. He is. Yeah. 
He, is, uh, he loves the attention. Now, Saturday, October 12th is a date for Oktoberfest. Uh, can you tell me what we'll see at this year's festival? So, Oktoberfest, we're pretty excited. We have four bands again this year. Okay. Um, we have two German bands. Uh, the first one's Rhinelanders. They start at 1.30 and kick off the Oktoberfest. I'm sorry, they yeah, start at 1. No, 1.30, I'm sorry, one thirty, okay. And um, then we have Ken and Mary's Turbo Accordion Express. So they seem to be a pretty lively couple. Okay. Um, followed after that is two local bands, Timestamp and then Orgonia. So we're pretty excited about that. Mm -hmm. We have a whole kids area again. Um, lots of craft beer and some local wine and yeah. tons and tons of food vendors. And now we, the uh, kids uh, event, because it's a family friendly event, Thimble Gardens is mm -hmm. sponsoring the kids' activities. Uh, uh, what exactly are, are they going to have to entertain the kids? So Thimble Gardens is going to have some different fall-type kids' activities, um, games to play. We're also going to have um, the, you can see there, the um, yeah. Home Depot workshop. We'll have Ty Ball is going to be doing one of his really cool murals that he's been doing at a lot of the festivals. Um, which will actually be placed in Miller Park at, after the festival, so we're pretty excited about now, that. Is, is the kid-friendly stuff, is that for the whole day at Oktoberfest? Or that is from 11 to 5. Okay, that's good to know. So, yeah. and that'll be a, that's always a nice area yeah. to, and we also have a Japanese connection with our, um, with a, a friendship park in Japan, yeah. and so there'll also be a few Japanese activities in the kids' area as well. well that's fantastic. That that holds a special place for me. My my wife is half Japanese, so uh, that that'll be that'll be neat. Now the the mural painting at Studio B. Can you tell us right. about that? So the Thai Ball is a school teacher over at Donovan okay. Elementary. And if you've seen the murals done at Harmon Park on the outside of the restroom. He and a bunch of the third and fourth graders went and did that last year. So he's been doing kind of these little pop-up murals at a lot of the different festivals like Third Friday, Feast yeah. and Folly, and he's going to do one special for Oktoberfest. Now, so. is it just him, or does he engage the kids and have so them help him too? It's, he does it kind of like a paint by numbers. Yeah. So he gets it all prepped up, and then oh. the kids and community can come in and paint their little square, yeah. and then he cleans it all up, and you end up with a really cool piece of art wow, at the end. that's awesome. And they've done that before? Yeah, some yeah. of the other festivals. Okay. Uh, Home Depot uh, Kids Workshop, can you tell us a little bit more specifics yeah. on that? So the Home Depot is really great that they provide these small kits where kids can just build a little small simple yeah. tool or toy and then they get to take it with them. Wow. So again, just something to keep the kids busy. Yeah. Um, and not just be bored at a normal festival. Now, when, when you're talking kids, uh, what, what are the ages for that? Because I got a three-year-old grandson, and, and I don't know how yeah. engaged. Well, uh, if he likes banging on stuff with a hammer, on stuff, yeah. perfect. We got something yeah. for him. Yep. <laughs> and, and German food? Uh, Boy, who doesn't like German food? What, right. what kind of German food are you going to have? So we're going to have a whole array of different yeah. kinds of foods. So everything from potato pancakes to brats. Okay. Um, I saw pork chops on the list. I mean, we have a nice variety okay. of foods. And if you're not so into German foods, we have, you know, you'll be able to get a burger or just a regular hot dog as well. How, how many vendors do you have? I think I have around 30 vendors all together. And how about food vendors? I'm not sure off the top of my head. Okay. So pro um, more than half of those will, okay. and then of course the famous soft pretzels that everybody loves okay. so much, they'll be back this the year. The Amish folks are coming out? Yep. Okay, because you say soft pretzel, I think I think the Amish folks, because yeah. they are, and, and they always have a huge line. Oh yeah, and yeah. it's so good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, now this is not your first rodeo. You, you've been doing this now for how many years, the Oktoberfest? So the October, this will be the sixth year for oh, the Oktoberfest, and um, Last year I helped out, and this year I've kind of led the group on yeah. that. So. Okay. Uh, we got to talk about beer. We're talking Oktoberfest. Mm -hmm. uh, are you having vendors come out with the beer as well, or is there just one one group that manages that? Because uh, w with with beer comes the potential of some other things. So. Well, as long as you drink responsibly. Ex yeah, exactly. It's fine. So we will have um, representatives from the Common Beer Company down in Mason, yeah. as well as Cellar Dweller, which is a, the beer uh, associated with Valley Vineyards down okay. in Morrow. Um, then we'll also have a lot of different selections from places like Warped Wing, um, 
Fig Leaf, yeah. Municipal all, Brewers. All local breweries? Um, we have a few of the yeah. domestics that, you know, most that some people okay. prefer. So, yeah. We so, have. How, how many different beer uh, vendors uh, as far as local uh, microbreweries are you having? Local microbrews will have um, seven altogether. Oh, oh West, I forgot, yeah. West Side Brewing will be there yeah. as well. So, we got a nice variety. J just a thought, they should have a competition, <laughs> uh, a, a beer tasting <laughs> event. Uh, Provided Reed's all done with the sit means sit yeah. and stuff. I, I nominate him and he'll nominate yeah, me. There we'll you be go. a couple of the judges who will be responsible. Uh, as long as you have a driver, you can have your own competition. <laughs> now, the music starts at 1 p.m. with the Rhinelanders? Uh, 1 30. Okay. Yeah. Is, is, that a, is that a German? That's got to yeah. be a German. Band. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're great. So, are they in the German attire? Oh, yeah. They do the whole thing, the okay. accordions and everything. They're a lot of fun. And, and how, how, did you, how did you get them? How did you track them down? They they actually played the festival last year, okay. so um, yeah, we were lucky enough to secure them again. So this they're year. they're a shoe in for someplace in Oktoberfest, right, exactly. yeah, being being a German band. And, and you told us the other people on the stage, uh, can you run by them again as far as the bands? So the second band is also German, and it's called Ken and Mary's Turbo Accordion Express. Okay. So it's just a duo with their accordions. Okay. And I haven't seen them, but I've seen their videos, and yeah. they seem to have a lot of energy. Sounds like a polka party. Yeah, this yeah. will be a lot of fun. Yeah. You're going to be out there doing a polka? Oh, we'll, we'll lead one yeah. out there. It'll right. be a lot of All fun. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then the third band will be Timestamp, which is a local band, okay. um, as well as Oregonia, which is another local band. Now, I've heard of Oregonia before. Mm -hmm. uh, they are a really popular local band. They are instructors at the Music Academy. Okay, that's, and that's Morgan and Josh. Yep, yep, yeah, that's gotta, them. They're my buddies. I yeah. got to give them a shout out. <laughs> that is so neat that yeah. we have local talent, and, and they're they're on last. Yep, uh, they'll be the headliners for oh, the night. That is that is awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I think they did a good job at that last festival having the kids mm -hmm. uh, perform, mm -hmm. and they really enjoyed that because they have a heart for the kids teaching them music. So good job. Uh, craft vendors at this festival? Do we have craft vendors? We just have a few, not okay. too many. And the Pooch Parade, Reed, that brings us to you. Uh, it, it's been renamed the Pooch Pageant. It has. Okay. It has. And, and it starts uh, the day off at 11 a.m. Uh, why, why the change from the parade to the to the pageant? Well, we're really focusing primarily on the costume contest this nice. year. Um, what, what's happened over the past couple of years is that people are showing up for the costume contest and, yeah. and sticking around for that. And then uh, when we started doing the, the parade, is, is for sort of people were taking off. So we just wanted to concentrate primarily on, okay, on the costume contest, like what you're seeing right that, now. Yeah. Um, and we have a, a, a great list of, of amazing sponsors of local dog businesses. Lebanon Small Animal Clinic, Dr. Jason is a primary sponsor this yeah. year. Uh, we have Four Paws Animal Hospital, Turtle Creek Animal Hospital, wow. Dwyer's Country Kennel, uh, Denise's Animal House, Broadway Paws, the Humane Association of Warren County, I'd like to come back to that, Louie's yeah. Legacy and Countryside Animal Hospital yeah. are all on the, the sponsorship team right now. And it's a chance for, for all of the, the dog-based businesses to, to really come together and celebrate yeah. and uh, give a, an opportunity for our, our, our individual clients collectively to come out and have fun with their dogs. and to be there and celebrate Lebanon, basically. Yeah, that, that, that's so cool that the people get to bring their dogs so much to, fun. to the event. Uh, we're gonna have a, a, we're also gonna have a, a canine officer from Ohio State Patrol yeah. be there, <laughs> Lebanon PD canine should be there. Um, Dr. Jason uh, or one of his staff will be there uh, to talk to the crowd as well. We're gonna have uh, different categories, uh, the same, sort of the same categories that we had for uh, the costume contest last okay. year. Okay. And actually registration starts at nine. The, the stage part will start at 11, but you can register as early as 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And can they register ahead of time? They can, actually. On the actually. internet or yeah. anything? How, uh, how and, do they do that? And this, and, and this isn't, it's not, a, it's not a sit me and sit event. It's a Main Street yeah. Lebanon event. We're, we're helping to, to organize everything wow. and sort of get everybody involved. But it, it's really a Main Street Lebanon event. And you can go to the Main Street Lebanon uh, Facebook page, okay. uh, Eventbrite. You can uh, pre-register. And we're really turning this year into a, um, we're trying to, get as much of a fundraising push for the Humane Association of Warren County for the 111 puppies that yeah. were um, saved and rescued last week, a week ago. Um, that so was, we're, we're that, was, that was poodles, correct? They were, yeah. go, uh, a combination of, of yeah. poodles and, and golden doodle puppies. Wow. Um, sad situation in terms of the dogs, but, um, but uh, the Everybody, the owner, everybody came together. Everyone's all, coming all together. All the vets, all the groomers. Everybody, uh, and you can see on the you can see on the screen now. Uh, most of them had to be um, 
had to be cut all the way down. Oh, my goodness. Uh, a lot of them are actually giving birth, so it's going to be closer to 130, 150 puppies. And so does the Humane Society have quite a few of those poodles now to, to help all adopt? Or they're all, all there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my goodness. They're, 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 they're really being overwhelmed, and that's why we're really asking people, if you can't wow. come to the pooch parade, you can still donate yeah. the, the $15 entry fee. Yeah. Um, and and that can, that's straight off the Main Street Lebanon uh, page. Yeah. Uh, we're sharing it out on Facebook. They're going to need about $45,000 or more. Can, can they just go to the Humane Society absolutely. and get some money as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They're, they're please, up. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Joanne Hurley would, would wow. love that uh, if, if people were doing that. It's just really, it's an opportunity. Uh, even a dollar, uh, if everybody could yeah. just contribute a dollar, that would make a huge, huge difference. Yeah, and, and you know, yeah. I, I, Joe was telling me a little bit about this story earlier yeah. and, and just how everybody came together. It's been uh, amazing. It, it really has. I mean, the, the, the groomers, love of our, the vets, yeah. the everybody, it's, it's been... And, and donations have been coming in, and, and, and everybody is, is doing their best to support, and we're just asking that that, yeah. that continue as well. S something terrible turned into something beautiful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, you know, I can't help but notice sometimes when people have a dog, mm -hmm. they start to look like the dog. Yeah. Do you have a, some, <laughs> some part of the competition like that? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we do have one of the categories is the best duo. Okay. So it's going to be the best combination of, of human and dog yeah. costume. Okay. Uh, <laughs> give me some examples last year as far as the best duo. Um, I can give you a, a, from a couple years ago, my daughter went as uh, Darth Vader and our Doberman Pinscher was Princess Leia. Nice. So that's, yeah. a, that's, yeah. a, that's an example yeah. of the best duo. Yeah. Uh, we, had, we had quite a few last year. Uh, I, I can't think of any off the yeah. top of my head. But, and uh, the, ca the other categories this year? Uh, we have scariest, best duo, best handler. Um, I think we're doing a, a junior. Um, and I, I should have all of those categories yeah. in my head right now, but, yeah. uh, but I don't. They're on all the posters. So uh, with the best handler, are they like doing tricks or how do you, how do you get to be it, best handler? It, it has to do with the, the youngsters who are able to, to control their dogs and bring okay. them up under because okay. they, they walk up the, the platform okay. and turn around and so face the crowd certain, and sort of yeah. see everybody okay. and Beautiful. let everybody see them. Yeah. 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 Is is India entering the competition? Because he's not going to be entering the competition, but but he will be there helping to supervise. Because <laughs> the potential bias with you being Correct. Indies, yeah, that's <laughs> that's very wise. Yes. Yeah. No, we're not we're not we're not see right there, buddy. Yeah. You're right there on the screen. You, uh, you must really enjoy this because this I is this is a chance for you to shine with something you just really love. Yeah. It's it, it's. It is because it's a celebration of, yeah. of Lebanon and, and yeah. just the dogs and all of the, everybody coming together. It's just, wow. it's an awesome opportunity. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Well, and you mentioned they can sign up ahead of time yes. at, at 9 o'clock. Absolutely. Uh, On the day, and you can actually pre-register online right now at, at Eventbrite. Okay, yeah. Eventbrite. Yes. Okay, and what other, what other information do you have available for the dog owners as far as... Uh, what they obviously they should bring uh, something to pick up the poop. Yes, please. Because we don't want to be. St <laughs> right. We love the dogs. We don't love the dogs. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So well, bring please, your own please stuff. Please ask you to, to bring poop bags. Uh, have your dogs on a leash. Okay. Uh, ask you know just common courtesy. Uh, no snout to snout contact unless yeah. everybody's uh, okay with that. Nice. Just sort of. Common sense, safety ideas. And, and once again, the time for Oktoberfest. It's from Oktoberfest is from eleven to nine thirty. And the date. It is October 12th. October 12th. Don't miss this. It's a great time of year, great event. Uh, bring your dog. Ha have fun. Uh, we'll return with the community calendar right after this break. Hey, let's check out this park. Oh, wow, that's really cool. To find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Disaster tips from the objects left behind. My home wasn't insured, but you can check your insurance policy now to make sure you're covered. Oh. My savings are lost, but you can put money aside and plan for unexpected disaster costs. We're lost forever, but you can scan important documents now so they survive. Whoa! For more tips on how to prepare, visit ready.gov. Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pelican? 
Wait. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. Where did Cavs go on vacation? New York. <laughs> They call me Prince like I'm royalty or something. But the places I've lived ain't no palaces. So I don't need grilled salmon or a new scratching post. Just give me a cardboard box and a can of tuna and we're good. You can even change my name. I'm cool being the kitty formerly known as Prince. made her college years possible, opening that education savings account when she was little, spearheading campus tours, and deciphering financial aid. If you can ace planning for college, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. And now it's time for the community calendar. There's still time to sign up for the Flying Flapjack 5K at 8 a.m. on October 19th, held in conjunction with the Lebanon Kiwanis Pancake Breakfast course runs from the start of 11 Countryside YMCA bike trail on South Street by the train tracks out to the YMCA and back. Your registration fee also includes a pancake breakfast at the Lebanon Conference and Banquet Center that morning. To sign up, go online to flyingflapjack5k.itsyourrace.com. Don't forget the Park Masters Plan open house on Wednesday, October 16th at or in, in room 128 of the Warren County Administration Building at 406 Justice Drive from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. You'll be able to see what's in the plan now and offer comment on what you think can be added to the plan before it's finalized. If you have any questions, feel free to give Casey Burdick a call at 513-228-3104. Caesar Creek State Park will hold a guided perimeter hike on Saturday, October 20th, beginning at 10 a.m. This 13-mile hike will take you through some of the most scenic areas of the park at the peak of the fall color season. Bring your hiking shoes, plenty of water, and a lunch, and meet at the Nature Center at 10 a.m. For more information, go online to CaesarCreekStatePark.com. If you're looking for a volunteer opportunity where you can get a little fresh air in the process, check out the Great Miami River Clean Sweep at Carmony Park in Franklin on Saturday, October 26, sponsored by Mother Nature's Classroom from 9 a.m. to noon. They'll clean out the junk along the riverbank in the park, located at 7499 Mart's Paulin Road. You'll get a free t-shirt, bottle of water, and a satisfaction knowing that you made the world a little better for the next guy. Check out Mother Nature's Classroom on Facebook for more information. On October 19th, at 10 a.m., Casey Burdick will talk about the science behind fall color. At Miller Ecological Park, Casey will explain why leaves turn the colors they do and why some trees lose their leaves and some don't. This event is free and open to the public. Wear comfortable shoes and dress for the weather. Well, that's it for our show today. We'll be back on October 15th with a look at the Lebanon Food Pantry, a preview of the Warrior 5K, and show you the progress that's being made with over 100 poodles that were taken in by the Humane Association of Warren County's Animal Shelter. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.